Hi there, so today um, I'm going to take you through building your first cinematic impact, impact preset using Kratos Studio. So here we've got one of the uh, factory presets loaded, which is a cinematic impact. So uh, for those of you familiar with the workflow of using these types of presets in Kratos Studio, just clicking um, in the XY pad here, in the four zone XY pad as we call it, and then moving will not only trigger that impact, but then allow you to adapt the mix as it's evolving. Um, and that'll be different every time. So let's build a version of this ourselves. So let's jump to the edit mode. So for those of you familiar with the edit mode, you'll, you'll know that as soon as you go under here, you'll be able to see under the hood of whatever you've built or whatever factory preset is happening here. So obviously we've got four tabs um, and these are full of samplers. Um, we could dive here under the hood and see how this preset's been set up, how it's been um, configured using the assign panel here, how these parameters here have been set up uh, in relation to the performance template up here. Um, but what we're gonna do, um, we're gonna build our own one and we're gonna use um, what, what we have as the cinematic uh, template um, to sidestep some of this work so I can do it even faster. So I'm gonna go to the burger menu, uh, load factory preset, and I'm gonna look for the preset templates folder and I'm gonna load the cinematic template. So um, we see now that this has cleaned everything out, um, but it's also still retained a load of um, designations, load of setup, so that the performance pad will start to work like straight away as soon as we start importing some sounds. So let's do that as our next step. So I'm just going to use some sounds I've already got from the um, Krotos starter library. Of course, you can use your own library uh, using Finder, SoundMiner, whatever um, sound library um, tool you're using. Um, as long as you can just drag and drop files from that source into Krotos Studio, you're away. So um, I've got a series of um, sort of bass drop sounds here. Um, I'm going to use those to make my first layer. So I can obviously just pick up a single sound and drop it in and then clicking in the full zone is going to trigger that sound. Um, all right, so right now that sound's going to, this is the only one, the only sound, sound I'm going to get every time. But I can now select any any other number up to 200 in fact um, audio files and drop those in so i've got four takes of this particular drop so i'm going to drop them all in and now we'll see by navigating through that we've got four of these sounds so what's going to happen now every time i click is we're going to get a different one from the bank and these are going to be randomly selected based on the setting here you can also switch this to round robin if you want things to play in a particular order all right so we've noticed now we've got layer one two three four uh, named on the tabs. And we've also got that in the four zone XY pad over here. So what that's going to do is if I click in layer one, we're going to hear the layer that we just added. If I click in layer two, we're not going to hear anything because this is a four way mixer. Um, and it's saying, okay, well, if I click in this position, give me everything in layer two. Since layer two had nothing in it yet, we're not going to hear that. So let's build out that layer next. Um, I would like to use these sort of strange howling synthy sounds. So I'm gonna pick those up, drop them in. Let's click over here and see what they sound like. Okay, so now we've got this layer and this layer. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little attack to that layer so that I just get mainly the, Im the impact from the sound is coming from this first layer. And now if I click here in between the two, I should get a mix of them both. Okay, cool. So we've now got two layers together. If I click in the center, we'll get a mix of both of them and also layers three and four that we haven't populated yet. So let's do that now. Um, so I'm gonna use something a bit different in layer three. I'm gonna use a uh, sound from the magic category, kind of twinkly bell type sound. I'm gonna throw that in now. So if I click in, in layer three now, So straight away, I should just be hearing this one just on its own. So you can also click and move using this setup to kind of preview the layers as you're going and also how they combine with one another. Which might be a way that you choose to perform with the preset. So you kind of, you know, you can perform it and adapt that feel as you build it out. Okay, so we've got layers one, two, and three. And now layer four, I would like to use something else here. I found quite a handy mechanical hit that I like here. Um, this might be quite handy in this type of design. So what does it sound like? Okay, so I'm gonna have to adapt the um, 
sample selection and the release. I also want to pitch this down because I, I just want that kind of metallic ding. Okay, nice. Um, let's stretch that out, get that release a little shorter. Let's hear it together. Okay, so um, that's not bad at all. That's a good little start. So let's name these layers, um, both in the tabs and in the XY pad. Um, so it's easy to remember what they are, what they do, and also for us to backtrack if we kind of continue to build up on top of these. So all I need to do now is right click on the name of the tab. And I'm going to call this Bass Drop. And before I forget, I go over to layer one, what was called layer one now, and rename that to the same thing. You can obviously call this something different if you want. If you wanted to just call it Drop, you could do that as well, whatever feels right to you. Uh, so uh, let's call this one Howl, do the same. Let's call this one Twinkle. And then rename layer three as well. Um, and let's call that one Metal. Metal, okay, cool. So now we built something that will give us variation because we've got different assets in there. Um, but I'm actually gonna increase the pitch variation and also the level randomization on some of these layers so that not only will it play a different sound, but it'll also repitch and adjust the randomization of the level there as well. Um, on my twinkle layer, I want to do the same thing. I also want to add some pan randomization, so it's going to move around slightly every time I trigger it as well. That might be an interesting way to do it. Uh, and let's do the same with the metal layer as well. So obviously you don't have to add randomization like this to anything, but if you want this to behave slightly differently every time, this is an ideal technique to use. So let's try that now. Okay, so now we're getting something a little different every time. It's far from perfect, but we're just doing this really quickly. All right, so we'll also find that my pitch control here, because I used that template, should also be pre-mapped to all these engines. So I can actually just turn this down and have that macro apply to all these layers. That's kind of cool. I can obviously pitch it up and down as well. So um, if I don't want to look at the edit mode and I really want to focus more on the design, maybe syncing to screen, experimenting, I can of course jump back to the perform mode. Um, everything I do as I work can of course be picked up and dragged and dropped out to the timeline as well in classic Chrono Studio fashion. But what I'm going to do here is make sure that I've got all these audio tracks here uh, set up to the different outputs of Chrono Studio because I can of course use the multi-channel output um, to record each of these layers as a stem as it comes out of the plugin. So just checking now that on the input section in my Pro Tools tracks here, I've got four audio tracks I made ahead of time, and I'm just checking that each one of those is routed to a different tab. So tabs one, two, three, and four, which we built out in the edit mode, are now routed out to different stereo tracks. So if I delete the one I had there, and arm all those tracks now, if I run the timeline, you'll see now. You'll see that each of these is coming out on a different stereo track. So those performances are then being recorded and obviously stemmed out as I go. So you've got a number of different ways of interacting with this preset once you've built it. And of course, using that multi-channel output workflow, you can then pick up the stems of each of these things as individual assets that you've generated, um, use them in the mix, hand them off to someone else if they're needing to mix them and all this type of thing. Uh, something else that I'm gonna do straight away before I forget, so obviously I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna save this as base drop one. Um, obviously I might wanna refine this. I might wanna add more layers. If I'm adding more layers, I'm probably gonna need to assign those using the assign panel here so for example if I added more samples into this second layer of the metal tab I would probably need to pick up the sample level and then assign that to the metal section this type of work is actually covered in some other tutorials that we have um, but just heads up of like that's how it might work if I was adding additional layers um, once I've saved this this is going to be great to recall um, use again whenever I want it 
Uh, of course, I could actually combine this also with the preset export we've got here. So um, I could uh, yeah, save this as a preset bundle, as we call it. And all these um, audio files would be grabbed and consolidated inside that bundle so I could share it with other people as well. So not only have I uh, quickly designed a preset, um, I can use that to make tons of variations on that preset. I can multi-channel output very quickly for the stems for it and I could even share it with some colleagues working on the same project if I if I wanted to um, and if we wanted to use the same shared resources using Credo Studio. So there we go that's a quick run through for building your very first cinematic impact preset in Credo Studio. Thanks for watching.